Welcome back to another episode of GMs for Hire. I am Jamil King with me as well, Polson. And today we are talking more NFL football and we're about to break down the AFC East division. Um, last season, for the first time in a long, long, long time, the New England Patriots were finally dethroned. The Tom Brady list New England, New England Patriots dethroned by none other than the team that circles the wagon, none other than the Buffalo Bills. Man, and if you watched any of our prediction videos, there is no better two people to be doing a video on this division. I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we, we circle the wagons hard around here. If I wasn't a Bucks fan, I would definitely circle the wagon. I'd jump through some tables. Um, I rock with the Bills. Hope they rock with us, City of Buffalo. Um, this is a good team. Um, one of the few teams I'm willing to say that are Super Bowl contenders. Um, for me, this team is loaded. They return the whole coaching staff almost. Um, Davido comes back offensive coordinator. Leslie Frazier comes back to man the defense with Coach Sean McDermott. They didn't lose much anywhere. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and turned into one of the best duos in the league. Um, they don't really run the ball, but when they do, it's it's been a little bit effective with um, Singletary and Moss. You know, they don't have the glamour names, but they get the job done. The receiving do the rest of the receiving core is pretty good. Um, they lose John Brown. They bring in um, Emmanuel Sanders. It's still Cole Beasley. It's still Gabe Davis. Um, Will, for me, this team is loaded. I don't know about you. This team still circles the wagons like nobody else. I mean, uh, this this team, again, the, the moves weren't crazy, um, but this team definitely got better. Uh, I, I think whenever you're looking at it from the draft standpoint, they went out, they went into a dress defensive line early and often getting both Carlos Basham from Wake Forest and getting Gregory Rousseau from the U in the first round. Um, you know, we've talked about their running backs. Uh, we talked about that being a big deal last year. Uh, I know a lot whenever we talked about it, especially for the AFC championship game, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, it's not a pretty group, uh, but they went out and signed Matt Breida. And if Breida can stay healthy, honestly, it's much better than what they have. Uh, if, if Matt Brady can stay healthy, then it'll be a great addition to this Buffalo Bills team. Um, and like you said, uh, they lost John Brown, but they replaced him with Emmanuel Sanders. And otherwise, this team doesn't change. And I don't know what it is about the Buffalo Bills and Sean McDermott, uh, but that defense has been building together for years and years. And it just seems like whenever you go to Buffalo, you just stay in Buffalo. Uh, it, it, it just seems like Sean McDermott just builds an atmosphere where nobody really likes to go anywhere. Um, you don't really hear too many big, big names leaving Buffalo, at least in recent years. Uh, granted, they don't have the biggest of star power, but they've just built a culture out there of winning. And they've just built a family out there in Buffalo. And Sean McDermott's got a lot to uh, a lot to add to that. Not to mention probably their biggest offseason addition. They did sign the 2021 MVP in Mitch Trubisky to back up Josh Allen, the Nickelodeon's valuable player. Come on now. I mean, if they, if you didn't think they were Super Bowl ready, they, they are now. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's ready to go. Uh, you're not going to be facing backup Matt Barkley. You're going to be facing backup Mitch Trubisky week 18 uh, when, whenever the, the Bills decide to drop uh, 56 points on you uh, with backups. I'm talking to you, Dolphins fans. Uh, you want to talk about it? But, uh, yeah, no, uh, Buffalo, continue to circle the wagons, man. Uh, this team only got better. Um, no huge additions, in my opinion, but I don't think they needed to do much. Uh, they just needed to do just enough, and I think that's what they did this offseason. Yeah, no, I think they definitely did what they needed to do. I mean, the, the, this whole team to me is very, very solid. Like I said, I think they're one of the few teams that can definitely call a Super Bowl contender um, on defense. They're they're still very solid. They have one of the better secondaries in the whole league. Might be going underrated, too, with Hyde, Poyer, and White leading the way over there. And, you know, you joke about Ultra Risky, but I actually think that was a really good signing for them. Well, it's I big. That if, you know, that I think he's finally in a place where they're going to use his skill set the way it needs to be used if Josh Allen were to get hurt. I think Trubisky, because he doesn't have the arms with like Josh Allen, obviously, but he has the mobility and to make plays that I think fits the mold for a back of quarterback with the Bills. And I think that was really big in case Allen does miss some games, even though you never want to see injuries like that. But, um, you know, we're, we're both hot on this Bills team. Uh, let's take a look at their schedule. They have a couple of key games this season. I know you're going to hit. I know they start off the season 
um, with two pretty tough games, two playoff teams, and the Steelers rematch of their playoff game from last year, and they get the Dolphins on the road. Um, they play the Chiefs this season too, so and the Bucks. So, where are some of the games looking at on um, the schedule, man? Um, Will, not Matt, excuse me. I love when you go through the schedule because you hit on games I want to talk about. Uh, I, I said it in the AFC West game, uh, in, in the AFC West video. I'm going to say it again here. Uh, week five against Kansas City in Kansas City, obviously the AFC uh, championship rematch. It's going to be a great game. Two of the powerhouses in the division – or in the conference, I should say. Um, and, and two of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, it, it's going to be a fun game to watch. Similar to what you mentioned, week 14 at Tampa Bay, potential Super Bowl matchup maybe. Uh, I mean, we were literally a game away from seeing it last year. Uh, so it's going to be in Tampa Bay, going to go face – go down to Tampa Bay, face Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Gronkineers. Uh, it, it, it's going to be quite the matchup. I think that will be a fun one to see. Um, and then another game in there in between those two games is week 11 against Indianapolis. Uh, they met in the first round of the playoffs last season. Um, and Phillip Rivers kind of let that game go. Uh, Indianapolis. He definitely let that game go. The Col- to be on- completely honest, the, the Colts probably should have won that game if they executed. Absolutely. Uh, Indianapolis looked really good in that game. Uh, Indianapolis's defense is amazing. The Bills defense is great. Um, uh, obviously, the offense of the Bills is outstanding, especially with the Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen connection. Uh, and, and by week 11, we should see Carson Wentz back and healthy. Uh, I think this will be a fun matchup and a great game to watch. I think this is week 11, one of those games you're just going to tune into. Uh, it's obviously going to have playoff contentions, both teams obviously up there. Uh, granted that Indianapolis can find a way to bridge the, the gap in between uh, Wentz being out and Wentz being healthy again. Uh, but, yeah, I love that matchup. I think by week 11, you're going to see Carson Wentz back in the, th- uh, back in the groove and, and, and the swing of things. And, and obviously Indianapolis and Buffalo, both two very good teams, both playoff caliber teams. Um, and I think that game will be really fun to watch. Yeah, you know, if they can get Wentz back and healthy, that, that will be a really, really good game to me, a game to watch. Um, yeah, that's that, that they're going to have to get that for them to have a good chance. But uh, I definitely like the Buffalo Bills chances this season. I think they're going to be really, really good. I think they should end up running away with this. Not running away with this, but I think they should still handle this division um from the incumbent patriots that they finally took down um speaking of the patriots can they finally get back not finally it's only one year i'm being a little disrespectful to the patriots can they get back to the top where they were you know they were dominant for so many years in this division with tom brady they lose tom brady they lose their playoff streak they let the bills in the division and this team looks a lot different than what they did um you know, two years ago with Brady. Now they come in. That's the second year of Cam Newton, but Cam Newton's not alone this season. Now Mac Jones comes in. They selected him in the first round out of the University of Alabama. We'll see what they do with him. Um, they needed to revamp the passing, the receiving core, because let's face it, last year was downright horrible. They lose Julian Eldam in their retirement. They decide to bring in Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne. They go double tight ends with Hunter Henry and John New Smith, signifying that maybe they want to keep running the football more with Cam Newton, that quarterback, and just give him more of a chance to run the offense. So what do you think of some of these offensive signings that the Patriots made this season? RJ, listen to me. Your guy sucks. Cam Newton is a bad, okay? Let me get that out of the way. I know you're not a Patriots fan, but I know you're one of the biggest Cam Newton fans out there. He's not good. Uh, Granted, the Patriots, a lot of people say they had a great offseason. And whenever I'm looking at it, to me, it wasn't that great. You know, as I'm looking more at the names, I'm really not intrigued. Uh, like you said, you lost Julian Edelman. We talked about how they lost Joe Thune to the, uh, to the chiefs. Patrick Chung also retired. Um, granted you're getting back, uh, Dante Hightower, uh, which will be great for the, the linebacking core. And there's a couple of great names in there. Matthew Judon's going to be a good addition. Kyle Van Noy coming back to new England, but the offensive side of things out of the four signings, the two wide receivers and the two tight ends, the only one I really like is John U. Smith. And that's kind of weird knowing that he was a backup tight end uh, to Delaney Walker for a very long time. Uh, so like, yeah, the wide receiver core last year was terrible and we know that, but how much of an increase is Kendrick born and Nelson Alexander or Nelson Aguilar, uh, Nelson Aguilar, unless Nelson Aguilar could totally prove me wrong. He's could do some stupid stuff go out and go pull a Philip Dorsett-esque type season, like how Philip Dorsett did whenever he was with the Patriots. And I could look stupid. And people could clip this. They could replay it, make me look like an idiot. Hunter Henry hasn't stayed on the field in his career, like ever. Like, so this is – 
granted when he's on the field, he's a great tight end, but how often is he going to be there? Um, Kendrick Bourne, I haven't seen enough of him. Uh, you, he got reps in a system in San Francisco that also didn't really have an established number one and saw a bunch of random wide receivers getting playing time uh, was kind of in that Dante Pettis, Brandon Ayuk era where it was just whoever got open, got the ball. And then it was Jimmy Garoppolo who couldn't hit the pride, like the wide side of a barn. Uh, I mean, it was just Kendrick Bourne. I haven't seen enough of Nelson Aguilar did fine with the Raiders, but previously he's been known more for dropping the ball than catching it. Hunter Henry's never healthy. Um, it, and then Mac Jones, to me, Mac Jones still isn't selling it for me. He's still number five out of the five quarterbacks, in my opinion. Uh, it, it, it's just I don't I don't know if I like the additions. The only one I really like is Christian Barmore, the defensive tackle out of Bama. Um, and, and then, like I said, Judon and Van Noy will be great for the defense. But we already knew this team had a great defense. It, it, it's the offensive struggles from last year, and they need to figure that out. And I just don't know if replacing D-level wide receivers with C level wide receivers is enough to make this team competent yet. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. The defense side of the ball should still be good with all these additions and with the secondary with JC Jackson, Stephon Gilmore. You know, they're gonna have they're not gonna have any problems guarding anybody. But on the offense side of the ball is gonna be the question. You know, I think Cam Newton's gonna be the starting quarterback for the, for the beginning of the season. So we'll have to see what Josh McDaniels can really stir up for Cam Newton this season. Obviously, last season was difficult. You know, you have no real offseason. He comes in late. You have no receivers. So this year, we'll see what he changes up the offense. So you bring in both tight ends. If Hunter Henry can get healthy to play at the beginning of the season, I would like to see what they do with him and John Newsmith together. We'll see how they line up. Maybe one of them, maybe John lines up as H back some plays. We'll see what they do with the double tight end sets. They're going to have to run the ball a lot more with Damian Harris. As the bell call back this year with James White um, mixed in, you know, they're, they're pretty still, they're still pretty solid at the running back group. And then Cam Newton's a running back in his own sum. So um, I think now, they can be decent with if Josh McDaniels can cook up some good plays on offense. I will say if Hunter Henry can stay healthy, obviously the Patriots have always been known for the two tight end set. They always find a way to work around it, obviously, with their time with Hernandez and, um, and, and Gronkowski. Uh, even Gronk had a couple different tight ends in that era as well. Uh, but the two tight end set has always been the thing in New England. It, it's just always been it. They, they, and they're known for having the, the almost nobody wide receivers, you know, with Julian Edelman, Danny Amendola, they're not known to have these big bodied wide receivers. Chris Hogan was a successful wide receiver in this system. Philip Dorsett was a successful wide receiver in the system. If everything plays right, they can do things correctly. And Bill Belichick, Josh McDaniels, they, they have yet to disappoint for the most part, obviously last year, a very injury ridden, very, just, very bad season. Um, but there were a lot of factors, like you said, a lot of injuries, a lot of nobodies at wide receiver, um, Cam Newton coming in late. Uh, there, there was definitely, and then also missing a stint with COVID. Um, there was a lot going on with New England. And then obviously they had like half their team opt out uh, due to the COVID and everything such as that. So it's it, it was a weird season for New England. Um, obviously the first season without Tom Brady made it even more weird. Um, but yeah, I just don't know if, if everybody returning is going to be enough. Um, but if they can muster up something, I agree with you. Josh McDaniels is the guy. I mean, Josh, we've seen him in, year in and year out make something out of nothing. Uh, so why, why couldn't he do it again? Um, there's no telling. But I think, I think this defense is still amazing, and I think this offense still just leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that the offense is definitely a step behind the defense. And like we said last year, a lot of crazy things happened. Crazy things happened. I think they are better than last year, but I don't necessarily know if that's going to be enough for them to make the playoffs this season. Right. Um, looking at their schedule, um, they, they start off with some games that they can win. You know, they can start from the right foot. They get the Dolphins week one. You know, it's a tough division game, but it's at home. So, you know, they're always tough to beat at home. They play the, the, the Jets right after that. In New York against the rookie quarterback. We know how Bill Belichick does against those. And they play a new look Saints team before playing the Bucks. So there's a couple winnable games for the season. After that, they play the Texans. So that should definitely hey. be winnable. So, <laughs> so hey. they, they definitely have a chance to start off strong. So what are some of the games you're looking at in the schedule? Who'd you do the AFC South with, though? Did you do it with Matt, Matt. or RJ? Oh, Matt. God. That guy had to pick three games that they look forward to for the Texans. That's tough. Um that's about as bad as the Jets. Anyway, uh, so week four, obviously hosting Tampa Bay. That's obviously the game everybody's looking forward to, no matter what. Uh, Tom Brady's return, uh, Gronk's return, uh, hell, Antonio Brown's return. Uh, it, it's going to be 
the the Patriots are returning. <laughs> you know, the Patriots are going to be back in New England. It, it's going to be nuts. Um, so that's obviously a game to look forward to. It's funny um, when you mention that game on the schedule. It says like how much tickets are going for. It says tickets as low as six hundred sixteen dollars. Oh, just a just a nice little bit of pocket change. Good. Uh, I'm glad I have six hundred sixteen dollars laying around. Um, yeah, no thanks. Uh, Week eight against Los Angeles Chargers, a game that if I paid 616 bucks for last year, I'd be pissed off, especially as a Chargers fan. Uh, but uh, yeah, that game last year ended 45 0. Uh, that was terrible. Uh, an- another year under Justin Herbert's belt. I think this is going to be a-, a-, a new look Chargers team, obviously, with a new uh, head coach. Uh, and then obviously, there's-, there's a lot going on with the Patriots. Are they a different team? Are they better? Are they worse? Uh, it'll be a, a-, a- a bit more of a closer game and I'm more excited to see that as a real contention as opposed to a 45, nothing game. And then uh, I said it for Buffalo. I'm going to say it again for new England week 15 against Indianapolis. If the Patriots can put it together, like a lot of people are saying they could, this has a lot of playoff contentions, a lot. Uh, Assuming Tennessee continues to be the Tennessee Titans uh, and, and assuming the Colts play somewhat decent ball when Wentz is out, this could have a lot of wild card implications. Mm -hmm. It's a wild card Uh, game right here. Absolutely. Uh, Week 15, only a couple weeks left in the season. New England could still be competent. Uh, Indianapolis could still be competent. This is a very important game whenever it comes to the playoffs. Uh, I'm very interested to see this. It's going to be in Indianapolis. I'm assuming maybe Mac Jones gets in there by then. Uh, And if that's the case, you're looking at two new quarterbacks and two brand new systems. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. And then it's also two great defenses, Indianapolis and mm-hmm. New England, both very good on the defensive side of things. Uh, it, it, it's definitely defensive heavy. Uh, both teams definitely run heavy with Jonathan Taylor, Marlon Mack, uh, Cam Newton and uh, uh, Sony Michelle, James White. I mean, uh, the whole crew, uh, it, you know, obviously two very run heavy defensive first teams. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. I like that game for a wild card implications. Yeah, another interesting part about that game is I don't know if you noticed that game sandwiched is that game is sandwiched between the Bills, the bye week, the Colts, and the Bills again. So wow. not to mention Josh McDaniels was supposed to be the head coach at Indianapolis. Yeah, Colts and bailed out thing. and went back to New England. With the Flames. So, yeah. There's, there's a lot so, of storylines in that. Yeah, that'll definitely be an interesting game. So we'll see what happens with the New England Patriots if they can get back to where they think they should be as a football team. You know, everybody is wondering if Bill Belichick can, you know, do it without Brady. We'll see if he can. Moving on down the division, we'll head on down to beautiful, sunny Miami, where all eyes are on one man, if you ask me, and that's Tua Tagovailoa. Um, His first full season with a whole camp, not injured. Um, He's the guy now. Last season, you know, he got picked. He was hurt. He wasn't necessarily the guy. He came in, came out, you know. He didn't really have the full backing it seemed like. He didn't really have the confidence that you need to be the number one guy in the NFL. But this season is different. He's the guy that built around him. In the draft, they went and got Jalen Waddell, his former teammate at Alabama. They signed Will Fuller. That's two speedsters to pair with Devontae Parker, Mike Jacecki, and Preston Williams. At running back, they signed Malcolm Brown to pair with Miles Gaskin and Salvin Ahmed. Um they decided not to draft a running back, and they decided to stick with those guys. So on offense, that they've decided to build around too. Well, you know, we'll see if the old line can stay upright for him, but they're giving him the weapons, and now they want to see if they want to see the return of their investment. They want to see him turn it loose and be the guy that everybody thought he was going to be when he was tearing up defenses at Alabama. And but are you going to get that? And that's the question. Uh, I, I'm still a two a hater, uh, to be completely honest. Uh, shout out to me. I, I pissed off probably a lot of fan bases in the AFC West video. Here's where I start to piss off fan yeah, bases. Yeah, people don't want to hear you anymore, bro. Yeah, no, they they're gonna hate me. Uh, I still hate Tua. I, I still can't stand Tua. Uh, really, I I just can't. And what better way than to help your inconsistent uh, quarterback with hip injuries than to bring in a wide receiver who is also got an injury history? Yeah, you guys played together in college. That's awesome. I hope it all works out in the end. Um, but this is a guy who had a lot of inconsistencies with wide receivers. And so I understand the idea of going to get Jalen Waddle and get a guy that you've played with, but why not go get Devontae Smith? Why not go get the guy who put an absolute stamp on it, won the Heisman, who's healthy? Uh, actually, no, he wasn't healthy either. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of injury issues as well. So it, it, I, I get where they're going for, uh, but then, you know, also bringing in Will Fuller. You know, this is a guy who had a lot of inconsistencies with wide receivers, and then what are they going to do? They're going to bring in a new wide receiver core. 
makes sense. Uh, you know, why not get the guys that you've had reps with, uh, you know, Devonte Parker, Jakeem Grants, um, you know, so on and so forth to get these guys that you're having reps with and trying to build that rapport with your team uh, right now, other than Devonte Parker and Mike Gusecki, everybody, well, I, I guess, and theoretically Jalen Waddle, everybody's on a fresh slate again. Um, you know, obviously Tua was dealing with some hip injuries and, and, and some injury issues coming into the combine or not the combine. Cause that was canceled. Uh, but, uh, going into pro days and everything such as that. And he was having a little bit of inconsistencies and the way that they ran the quarterback position in Miami last year was terrible. Uh, you know, if you're going to run with Tua, keep Tua in, don't go, you know what? He sucked this game, pull him, put Fitzpatrick back in there. And eh, Fitzpatrick starting to suck, put Tua back in there. I think they did a lot of bad for his growth. I think they needed to just sit there, commit to a quarterback and say either two is going to sit and learn, or he's going to be thrown to the wolves and he's going to have to figure it out this year. He's being thrown to the wolves and he's going to have to figure it out, but it is another year under the system. I think, I think they did a great job for him to try to get uh, Liam Eikenberg from Notre Dame in the second round. Uh, I think that was a great draft pick. Uh, Jalen Waddle, I guess I do like the addition to have somebody familiar that he is with from college, especially if he's struggling with wide receivers. Um, it's another year with Devontae Parker. It's another year with Mike Gusecki. If he can get comfortable, this Miami team is still very good. Um, the, the defense barely lost anybody, Kyle Van Noy, and I think that's about it. Uh, other than that, just be role players. Uh, but I still am just inconsistent with Tua. Um, and to have another somewhat – decent quarterback starting level caliber guy and Jacoby Brissett behind him is terrifying, uh, at least for Tua and, and for other quarterbacks in the NFL. Jacoby Brissett was a guy who just started two years ago. You know, he was the starting guy before Phillip Rivers. Uh, so uh, in Indianapolis, that is. This is a guy who could get reps and play decent quarterback play. Now, is he a wild card level quarterback? No, but is Tua? We'll find out. Um, this defense is obviously going to be the thing that carries him. Can the offense put it together? We'll find out. Uh, but but me already, I, I'm still just – I hate on Tua a lot, and I'm going to continue to until he proves me otherwise. Uh, until he can show me a game in which he can competently play in the NFL at a decent level, then I, I, I have to just sit there and say that I, I'm not a believer right now. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the defense. You know, I'll touch on that before we, we talk about the rest of the offense. They're still bringing back a lot of studs. They're bringing Jalen Phillips in the draft to add to the pass rush. They still have Xavier and Howard and Byron Jones in the secondary, so the defense is still going to be pretty solid. If you ask me, if Brian Flores over there manning the thing, he's, he's been doing the same for the past few seasons, so I'm not worried about them. But I do agree with you about the offense. You know, you mentioned, you know, the continuity thing. You know, they still have those guys they had last year with, with Williams, with Grant, with – um, Parker, they just went and added, you know, a couple speedster guys. I think Jen Waddle was, was a terrific receiver when he's healthy. I think he's a good mix of a speed guy downfield and a guy that can get the ball in space that can just make people miss. I think he's going to be electric if he can stay healthy. Wolf Fuller, I do agree with you. You know, he's inconsistent. He struggled staying on the field in Houston. When he does, he's a great deep threat. But problem is, best ability is availability. How long is he going to be available for you? And that's and, the thing. Um, yeah, you know, with him, it's just how long we'll be on the field. And I do agree with you. I do think the Dolphins did stunt the growth last season. I thought it was a stupid idea. I mean, it was clearly a premeditated idea that they were going to put two in when they did. They didn't. I don't think they expected to be in the position they were at record-wise when they did it. And I think that, that screwed up Ryan Fitzpatrick. Then when Tua started playing, they pulled him. That ruins his growth. But Ryan Fitzpatrick in, I think both of them were in horrible, horrible positions. And they're both in way better positions this year, knowing they're going to be the guys manning their offenses. And for two, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt last season because of having not played in a long time, having the factors we just mentioned happen, and then COVID. I think just I think that's a lot of guys that I'm willing to give a pass on from last year. So this year, you have a new new offensive coordinator. You have a lot of new um, receivers to throw the ball to, and you have a full off season. So now it's time I think for Tua to show us why he was picked so high. And if he can't, um, then he, he might not be playing that much. And if Jacoby Brissett is playing for this team. That means something horribly wrong has gone on for the Dolphins and with Tua Tagovailoa, if you ask me. Absolutely. No, I, I think this is going to be a big year for Tua. Obviously, I think I think whenever it comes down to all, you know, all the quarterbacks in the league, I think the most eyes are on Tua whenever it comes to figuring out answers. And I think it's just because, like, we know who Drew Locke is. We're not paying attention. We we, we know it's not the answer. It, there, Tua is, like, the guy right now where we have to figure it out. Maybe the only other guy who – might have more eyes on him right now is 
Sam Darnold, maybe. Uh, but I mean, our boy RJ is just hoping he sucks so they can take for how. So, I mean, uh, so it, it, it's one of those to where, you know, you, you look at it, the Miami team, Miami has a great team that was one game short of a wild card last year, one game. And, and they had a positive record at 10 and six. Uh, they were, they were a very successful team, a very good team. And I think they could very well be another great team this year. Um, but is Tua going to be enough? Uh, Tua had a lot of games last year where I just like, You know, I I felt like Tua could have done so much more, and I felt like the defense was just bailing him out too much. You know, Miami was getting a lot of clutch wins down the stretch, but it's because that defense was playing so well. I mean, the defensive touchdowns, defensive turnovers, whatever the case may be, um, not to mention Miles Gaskin came out of, like, almost nowhere mm-hmm. and, and, and was performing amazing uh, whether it be catching it out of the backfield either or, or running or, or the run game. He was a very, you know, very competent running back and a very good fantasy pickup for me on the waiver wire later in the year. Um, so is it going to be enough? We'll see right now. I'm still just my doubts. I have doubts into it. Um, I, I don't like Alabama quarterbacks and I don't like Ohio state quarterbacks. Shout out my team taking an Ohio state quarterback. Thanks asshole. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, it, it's just the history of the quarterback at, at the university of Alabama has just not been great. And uh, it, it's just, you look at the track record and is Tua going to be the guy who makes it different is Jalen hurts going to be the guy who makes it different. Well, even then he went to Oklahoma. So uh, Tua, the eyes are on Tua. You got to figure it out because right now this Miami team is a team that could easily make the wild card. And this is a team that honestly with really good quarterback play could take the division. Uh, The Buffalo is a very good team as well. Um, But even with very inconsistent quarterback play, they were only three games behind the bills last year. So Miami, this is the time to try to figure it out. I love Flores. I, I think he's an amazing coach and I love this defense. I think this team could easily go somewhere, but it's all on number one. Yeah, I definitely think it, it, it all falls on Tua's shoulders. You know, it's funny you mentioned the Ohio State and Alabama quarterback thing. That's a video. We can have a whole separate video on that. Oh, yeah, we could. About quarterbacks going. I, I don't necessarily think it's on the schools with the quarterbacks because Bam, Tua was the first Bama quarterback that was actually supposed to be a pro quarterback in the past decade. And Ohio State, Dwayne Haskins was the only one that really was supposed to be a pro quarterback in the last decade, too. So the, all the other ones to me were That's guys so that weren't expected to be good in the pros. But focusing on the Dolphins' schedule, um, you know, you mentioned all eyes are on Tua. Um, he doesn't have the easiest first two weeks. He goes to New England to face Bill Belichick and Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson. Then he hosts Buffalo to face Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer, and Tredavious White. So not the hottest start. They do then get the Vegas Raiders and the Minneapolis Colts. You could still be a far Carson Wentz, but then they get the Bucs. So uh, how do you feel about the, this Dolphins schedule? Uh, Dolphins don't have an easy run. And, you know, you, you told me to be ready with three games and, and week one and week two are two of my three games, uh, to, to go in against new England and then to go versus Buffalo in Miami. Uh, like you said, this is a tough start. Uh, and this is exactly honestly what Tua needs, uh, Tua needs to be thrown to the wolves. These are two great defensive units and I, and I, and two division, uh, in division rivals, uh, Tua needs to figure this out. And Tua needs to figure it out early. Uh, if, if Tua can walk away with two dubs here, I will take away mostly everything I've said. Granted, he plays well. Uh, now, if it's all defensive touchdowns and kick returns and other things like that, obviously I'm not going to take back what I said. But if Tua can play competent and can show that he's playing good against decent defenses um, and, and everything such as that, and, and especially against division rivals that he's going to see multiple times a year, then I could see the Miami Dolphins being a very successful team. Um, but those, t- those first two weeks are going to be telltale signs for Tua. Uh, and the other game I wanted to see was week six against Jacksonville because Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tagovailoa just gives me very fun, nostalgic vibes that I saw probably three years out of the four that they were in college. Uh, I mean, let's just throw it back. Like it's, uh, like it's 2018 or something. Let's just get crazy and go back to college football days and, and pretend we're watching Clemson Bama, uh, like we watched for. 20 straight years it almost seemed like in the national championship so uh yeah why not see trevor lawrence and uh and Tua get back at uh get back at the old thing and and, at week six and see how that goes yeah that'd definitely be um a fun matchup for a lot of college football fans that don't necessarily have a pro team and see those two guys going at it but uh, to round out this division we'll head up to new york and we'll cover the new york jets um Mm -hmm. obviously a team that has been bad for the past few years 
they made a coaching switch. Robert Sala comes over from the San Francisco 49ers. He will now be the head guy in charge of the New York Jets. And the first thing that he did was uh, get a new quarterback. Sam Darno is out of New York and in his Zach Wilson. Um, personally, I don't know how Justin Fields fell from the number two spot from the preseason all the way to there. But Zach Wilson, you know, he still did this thing at BYU. No, no disrespect to him. And we'll see what he can do with this offense. Um, it's revamped at running back. I don't know what they're going to do. They have Michael Carter in the draft. They signed Tevin Coleman. They still have Michael P. Ryan at receiver. They went and signed Corey Davis, gave him the bag to be the number one wide receiver. They didn't want to see what Denzel Mims can do as a second, as a second year guy. And they still have uh, Jamison Crowder and Elijah Moore coming in as a rookie. I think he's going to lie it up over the middle. Those two guys will play the slot, though. So we'll see what they do there. And they still have Hearn in that tight end, who we always hear in the preseason that he's going to be really, really good. And then the season starts and he does a lot of nothing. So. Um, Every time. How do you feel about the Jets going into this season? Uh, to me, the Jets are the winner of the offseason in this division and one of the one of the winners in the NFL. Uh, I love the addition of Robert Sala. I think it's a great I, I think he's a great head coach. I think it was one of the the the, the more sought after names in the offseason whenever it came to coachings. Uh, coaching decisions, obviously, there's your names like Josh McDaniels, who's up there every single year, but never leaves. Um, and then Bob Sala was up there right there with him. Um, and for the Jets to get him, I think this will be really interesting, even though they're going to have to change defensive schemes. Um, now, do I think they're contending this year? Absolutely not. Um, but I think that they set up a, an amazing future for this team. Uh, Corey Davis getting the bag. I don't like that. But everything else about this team uh, in their offseason, I love it. I, I, I absolutely love it. Getting Zach Wilson, the quarterback of your future, being able to get Elijah Vera Tucker later in the first round, who was an amazing offensive line talent at USC. Uh, I think he was probably the best interior guard in the draft. Uh, I, I, I love Vera Tucker. I, I think that's a great addition. Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss, a great slot wide receiver, probably the best slot wide receiver in the, um, in the draft class last year could even argue from his ability in the slot that he is the best wide receiver in the class. Uh, I mean, the guy has that kind of upside potential. Uh, Michael Carter getting him in the fourth was an amazing pick. Obviously you can always snake running backs pretty late. Um, and they did so there and they definitely need some running back help. Whoever the hell is going to run at running back. Uh, and then getting the addition of Tevin Coleman, like you mentioned, uh, I think they addressed the running back issue, which was a eyesore for the team. But I mean, then again, so was everything. Uh, Hamza Nazir uh in the sixth round. I loved this guy out of Florida State. Uh, I wanted everything in my power to have him come to Chicago. And uh, now he's going to be playing a little bit of depth linebacker, a little bit of a single, probably some single high safety uh, for the uh, for the Jets. You know, if he makes the if he makes the team out of camp. Uh, Keelan Cole, a decent little wide receiver to get out there, work with Zach Wilson, Sheldon Rankins on the defensive side of things. I mean, they had an amazing offseason. I, I, I don't think I can stress that enough that they had an amazing offseason. Uh, I'm really fond of what the Jets did, and I think they definitely started the foundation, and now it's just building up. Uh, this is a very tough division to build up in. All three of these teams are contenders. Uh, all three of the teams ahead of them, at least. Uh, but can they make something happen this year? Obviously, I don't think they're going to be nearly as bad as they were last year. Uh, you know, I, but I also don't see them much farther than pick number five. Uh, I think this is going to be a little bit of a feel out year, new system, a bunch of new personnel. Uh, and so I, I think this is going to be a feel out year for the Jets. But here in a couple years, if if the core stays together and everything goes as it could, then this Jets team could be sitting looking 500 in a couple of years. Yeah, definitely agree with a lot of the things you said. And I'm hitting a couple of things. You know, Salah is going to come in. He's going to change the defense up. He's going to turn from 3-4 to 4-3. They went and got Carl Austin to get after the quarterback. We'll see what he can do with Quentin Williams. I want to see what C.J. Mosley can do up the middle. You know, we haven't mm -hmm. seen him play in a couple of seasons. So I'm excited to see if he can still man the middle of the field the way he used to. Um, the back end of the secondary, I have, a little, I have a lot of questions about, but that will come with time. You can't, Rome wasn't built in the day. Like we said, you know, they started building the foundation, which is key. Um, I think they didn't necessarily do that with the old regime with Sam Darnold and what they had going on there with Adam Gase. Um, but here uh, you can definitely see things are different. They go and get Zach Wilson. They start building around him. They get Vera Tucker to slide next to Becton. So the left side of that line is locked up. So on next, you can look and replace the right side of the line. Maybe you replace the secondary. You got him. You know, I agree. You know, Corey Davis, he only had the one big year of Tennessee. So we'll see if he earned that contract. But, you know, we'll, we'll see if he can be the guy for Zach Wilson. But they, they went out and tried. They got him a guy. They picked another guy. They got some running backs. 
they tried to build around Zach Wilson, opposite of what happened with Sam Darnold in his time with, with the Jets. And, you know, speaking of Sam Darnold, um, when you look at the Jets' um, schedule, they play in week one. <laughs> Number Carolina, one. <laughs> and they get them right off the bat. And awesome. um, the Jets have a couple interesting games this season. They, they play some teams they can beat. Um, they play Houston. They play Jacksonville. They play Cincinnati. They play Atlanta. Um Games that they can possibly sneak up on some guys and win a couple games this season. So, what are some of the games you're looking at? Well, let me say I'm gonna put my face to this right now. Uh, Zach Wilson's gonna prove week one that he's a better quarterback than Sam Darnold. Uh, Jets are gonna come out and start with a dub. I'm calling that. Uh, I'm calling that right now. That's gonna happen. Uh, now after that, shaky to say the least. Um, week 16 again, Jacksonville. Pick one versus pick two, obviously always a fun time, uh, especially when they're the same exact position. So that'll be fun. Uh, I'm excited to see that between Trevor Lawrence and uh, and Zach Wilson. Uh, week 14, another team uh, in or they are the Jets are hosting New Orleans. Uh, I think this is a, a team that obviously they're going to have their quarterback issues. Who the hell is going to start for New Orleans? Nobody knows. Uh, right now, Taysom Hill is still taking QB1 reps, which is terrible that makes no sense um that that is so disgusting and i'm not even a bucks fan uh I'm not a florida state guy but dear god christ give that man winston a chance um horrible uh so if if Taysom hill still the quarterback of that that's a game i could see them sneaking out uh that's a that's a defensive that's a defensive unit in the saints that's honestly pretty good but the offensive play takes over the defensive play in that sense i don't think the saints offense other than excuse me, other than Alvin Kamara is anything to write home about. Um, and then week seven against the new England Patriots. Cause who doesn't want to see uh, a rookie quarterback go up against Bill Belichick? Uh, who doesn't want to watch the Patriots drop 45 and, and the Jets score nothing. Uh, so uh, I'm still a little sour about that. Cause I still took the chargers. Um, but yeah, so I, I was still the champion on Pickums last year. So I, I really don't care, but uh, that game makes me sick to my stomach and I want to see that happen again. So shout out to the Patriots for kicking the jets ass in week seven. Yeah. I can't wait for the week 16 game against Jacksonville. You know, we get to see Wilson versus Lawrence one versus two. That should be a really, really good one. And um, one thing I want to point out, you know, how I told you that the, the bucks versus the uh, Patriots game had like low $616. Please don't tell oh, me it's more. Oh, no, no, no. The Jets have oh multiple games starting in the $20. Need <laughs> me a $20 game. The Jets have a lot of 30 40 and $20 lowest. What's lowest that game? How, how much is that game running against Jacksonville? We might make a trip. It says the lowest, $26. Oh, 26 bucks to see. But the game's in New York, not Jacksonville. I don't care. <laughs> that, dude, it's going to – I'll fly. A road trip. Who gives a shit? It uh, says D- the lowest ticket for the, 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 the Dolphins is 13 GMs for Jersey? Are you kidding me? Oh my God, Miami! Oh my God, GMs for Miami! Oh my God, dude, are we about to become Jets season ticket holders? Is this about to happen? I'll stick with my Bucks tickets for now. I know I'm the closest one to them in the state of Mississippi, but I mean, come on, (laughs) who cares? Let's do it. Well, that just goes to show you what the Jets uh, Jets season might look like with the ticket prices. But ticket um, stuff. at least we both agree that they're, they're on the right trajectory, though, to becoming a good team. And I think we Absolutely. we both agree how this division is probably going to go. I think we both have the Bills taking the division. Yep. Um, second or third, you know, could go either way between the, the Dolphins and the Patriots, if you ask me. And I think we both agree that the, the Jets are going to finish last. Yep. Uh, any last words in this division? No, I mean, uh, I think this division is more – I think, I think it's closer than a lot of people think. I think Buffalo is the clear favorite, but I think that Miami New England play makes things very interesting, especially if the system goes a lot better offensively for both teams. If both teams find a way to uh, both the dolphins and the Patriots find a way to offensively click this year, this might be the most fun division to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, very three, very good defenses uh, in, in both Miami, New England and uh, in Buffalo. This is going to be very good teams. Easily a Super Bowl contender in Buffalo. Uh, this is going to be a really fun division. Uh, I, I really like this division from top to bottom, uh, even with the Jets, because I still think, like I said, or like we said, you know, the, the trajectory is right. Uh, it, it finally seems like the Jets are finally starting to take a step in the right direction and get away from mediocrity for a little bit. Um, granted, it's going to take time, but they're doing the right things. Uh, the, the, like we said, the foundation has been laid. Um, 
I like I like this division from top to bottom, and I think it's going to be very fun to watch. Uh, I think the storylines are set in this division, and and everybody knows exactly what to keep an eye out for for every team. Um, but until then, I mean, we just got to let it play out because who knows if New England's going to be back? Who knows how two is going to play? Who knows how that running game is going to be? And who knows? Maybe Zach Wilson comes in. He's the next. I don't know Andrew Luck or something. You know, he could come in and just shock the world. Um, so, so who knows, but it'll be fun to watch. I think this division's a, a very fun division to keep eyes on this year. Yeah, I definitely agree with that too. I think it's going to be good to watch Zach, Zach Wilson's development. And then like we mentioned, you know, okay, can the, the Dolphins and the Patriots offenses keep up with their defenses to give the Buffalo Bills the challenge that a lot of the other teams, they actually hope they give them because you want, you know, you want to see the top teams get dethroned, but at the end of the day, um, we'll have to see what happens with those teams. They got a lot to work on. We'll see if they can work on it. And everybody's chasing Buffalo. Um, Chase that, the wagons. Yes, sir. You no one circles the wagon like the Buffalo Bills. But we're not biased yeah. here. You know, we like we like everybody, but we just like the Bills. Maybe we just like the Bills more. <laughs> maybe we just like the Bills maybe this much more. We we like circling the wagons. You know, for Buffalo. We, like their fan, we love the fan base in Buffalo, I think. Still needed more. them to go to the Super Bowl so RJ could jump through that table. But yeah, that would have been that would have been a sight to see. Oh uh, man. Hopefully this year. Or maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe. We don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Find out. <laughs> but for that, I was Jamil. That was Will. Thank you guys for watching.